Hi and welcome. Switzerland is a great location for companies to test products and to scale. It's a playground to validate and adapt for the European and the global market. In this webcast, we'll introduce you to Kickstart Innovation, a program matching deep tech startups with corporates to form partnerships. We'll hear about real-world testing for intelligent transportation systems, and we talk about the pioneering regulations that Switzerland has in place for emerging technologies protecting your intellectual property and how you can scale in artificial intelligence in your company. Switzerland might be the perfect location for you to test and scale your business too. Thanks for joining us. So let's hear first from Katka with Kickstart Innovation. Thank you very much, Serpa. Hello, my name is Katka Letzing. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Kickstart Innovation. We do believe that the world needs innovation to thrive. Um, in the practical terms, we connect international as well as local tech startups and scale-ups with leading corporates and institutions in Switzerland and beyond. We accelerate entrepreneurship as well as partnerships and push an open innovation culture on all levels. Kickstart Innovation is spin-off of Impact Hub Zurich and we have around 100 locations around the world and engaging with startups in many different fields. To this date, Kickstart has become one of the largest open innovation platforms, engaged over 5,000 startups, um, made over 170 deals in the POCs and commercial projects, as well as our alumni fundraised over 250 million in funding and investments. Next to that, we engage over 150 organizations um, including mentors, advisors, experts, and other organizations. Next to that, also engage over 3,000 individuals. Um, so when you think about that, you gain through our program in 10 weeks network that normally will take us 10 years to gather and make those relationships. If you look at the corporate side and the partner side, we engage over 100 organizations, uh, the largest ones in Switzerland, in the public and private sector including AXA, COP, Mobiliar, Migro, but next to that also universities such as ETH and EPFL and foundations and many other organizations on the market, not only in Switzerland, but also across Europe. When we look at the topics that we are focusing on, we focus on edtech and new work, fintech and insurtech, food and retail tech, smart city and technology, health tech, entrepreneurship, next to across um, implementation of the circle economy and deep tech. You might be asking a question, I'm a startup and why should I choose Switzerland? Well, there are many different reasons, but maybe I can just highlight some. One will be market stability, where GDPR has been growing in the last 10 years, purchasing power, where GDP per capita is the fourth largest in the world. Um, there's 3% of our GDP that has been invested in development and research, including deep tech. Um, as mentioned already of the university systems, we have universities that are in the top 100 highest educational world university rankings. And next to that, of course, support of entrepreneurs in forms of funding, expertise, um, tax advantages, and much more. If you look at our alumni and success stories, you can look at Vizu, who has joined us in 2016 uh, with AI system and now is in 250 agencies all around Switzerland helping um, AXA insurance agents um, to support their customers on a daily basis. Or you can also look at Lobster that has been implementing uh, educational systems and now has scaled um, to European markets uh, with their services and uh, supporting educational systems um, in the region. So the key message is make it happen with us and we hope that you can accelerate in Switzerland. Thank you. So looking forward to more discussions and let's hear now from the next uh, speaker, George. Hello, my name is George Demelis and I'm the founder and CEO of Photognosis, a startup founded in 2019 in Schaffhausen. 
Photognosis offers space awareness for a safe and engaging environment. Initially, our focus was on public transportation vehicles such as buses and trains, and quickly we expanded to stations and uh, smart buildings. If I would have to summarize what we offer, I would use two points. The first is that we're trying to offer as many insights about the people in that space. And second, we totally respect people's privacy. So imagine a system that can be as smart as a human observing the space so can understand what is happening there, but does not have the ability to recognize people or to remember them. Let me give you an example. So assume we are in the future and uh, an autonomous bus is driving late on Sunday evening and uh, it has only one passenger and this passenger is a handicapped person that needs help or uh, has a medical issue and faints. Our system would create a specific alert with information about the bus and the road that this person is sitting and what kind of emergency this is. And thus, the authorities would be able to have this information and uh, assess the situation and provide help to this person. And now, during the COVID times, we added some additional insights for the health of people, such as detection of fever and coughing, and also measurement of heartbeat and breathing rates. And this helps to create even safer environment with situations such as COVID. So I remember it was 2019, we have finished the initial development of the prototype and we were ready to decide where to establish our company. And we considered many options, mostly around the Bodensee. Eventually, we decided to go for Schaffhausen, mainly for two reasons. The first is Generis, the company for economic promotion of Canton Schaffhausen. A second, the Swiss Transit Lab, also in Schaffhausen. Starting with Generis, Generis was a great, pleasant surprise for us, not because they provided help when we asked as we expected, but also they did that in a proactive way. I remember in that case that we're just about to start planning a test of our system in real conditions, when they came to us and said, guys, you know, in order to do that, you would need to get a permission from the local authorities. So they offered us to uh, identify where, who is the responsible officer and also introduced us to him and help us to present our project and why it is important uh, for the people. And we got this permission. And I know that every time that they would meet another company that could be potential partner or customer or the authorities, they will talk about our companies and explain why it is important what we're doing and how the community will benefit from it. So with Generis, we're happy to have this feeling that they are a reliable partner who is trying to help us in an active way. And the second reason that we chose to go for Schaffhausen is Swiss Transit Lab. As I already said, for us it is very important to um, have the ability to test our devices. So it was a natural choice to go for Swiss Transit Lab. But we realized that it's more than that. There we could come in contact with other companies, either potential partners or uh, customers. And also, in particular, I would like to mention the local uh, public transportation company, Verkehrsbetriebe Schaffhausen, which is a company passionate about offering the, the best possible services to its uh, customers, the passengers. So when they heard about us and what we're doing, they were enthusiastic and they offered us all their help. So they helped us a lot to understand what are, which are the customer needs, uh, what the passengers like and what dislike, and what uh, a, a company that manages a fleet actually needs. And of course, the biggest help was to offer us their buses as platforms for us to test our systems in controlled and environment and also in real conditions. 
So as you can understand, we were really happy about the support that we found in Schaffhausen. It was a big help and we don't think that we would be able to get the same help somewhere else. And uh, I'm personally so excited that uh, I don't stop to recommend Schaffhausen, Schaffhausen as a great place for startups to be established. I hope it was useful and um, I'm looking forward to more questions. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Nicole Büttner. I'm part of the management team at Morantix and also co-founder and CEO of Morantix Labs. Very happy to be here today. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about what Morantix does, um, also how we see the issue around scaling AI and maybe give you a little bit of a preview of what a breakout session with us could look like. So at Morantix, we're really driven by the mission to bring AI and machine learning from research into production. We found that in Europe and, um, well, Germany, Switzerland, uh, there are a lot of great AI researchers and a lot of innovation happening in the academic field, but often the challenge is really to bring real world value to companies. And that's basically what we have uh, set out to do. We do this in two ways. So first of all, Marantix as the mothership is a venture studio, an AI first venture studio based in Berlin. We incubate and build um, new companies um, that bring new AI and data-driven business models uh, into this world and um, create a lot of impact. We're, for example, uh, active with VARA uh, in the medical imaging field. Uh, we're active, for example, with SIA Search in the autonomous driving space. Uh, our venture, Cambrium, is uh, looking to uh, improve new materials discovery and R&D in the synthetic biology space. Etc. So this is really new startup creation. The second um, angle that we pursue is with Morantix Labs. That's the portfolio company I founded within Morantix, which is a service provider. And there we work with established companies, with family owned businesses, with SMEs, big corporations to really bring these data driven and AI um, first business models to existing companies and help them harness the full potential of AI within their organization. And um, this is really a heartfelt mission because we see that a lot of the companies are active in sort of exploration. So they're doing the first prototypes with machine learning and AI, but are finding it more difficult to really scale this to fully productive systems. And our expertise in building um, AI companies and working very closely with industry partners from different sectors uniquely enables us to sort of share insights and help organizations reach this level and like full potential and impact in their AI and data efforts. So maybe as to the issue of scaling AI, we uh, have started uh, an AI canvas together with the University of St. Gallen exactly to address this matter and to provide a framework in which, um, with which you can scale these initiatives and a methodology and toolkit that helps you and your data teams to really think about scalability from the very, from, from inception basically, and keep it in mind for all the later steps that are to follow. And we structure this really in, in three main parts. The first one is business. So, it might sound a little bit banal, but it's really important to always keep the value proposition in mind when thinking about data-driven and AI models within your organization. Um, also the investment and how do you want to measure impact and, and the return on investment. That's something that often uh, we can lose out of sight as we're sort of lost in fancy and cool technical gadgets. The second pillar is around the organization. So it's really quite crucial to have the right organizational setup, to hire the right talent, to train the people within your organization and create an environment um, as well as a setup and decision-making structure that is uh, adapted to an AI life cycle. The third pillar is around tech uh, and infrastructure. So there we tackle a lot of the things around creating the right uh, kind of uh, infrastructure, data infrastructure, architecture, 
also um, a lot of things that are related to governance and security. So um, really a lot of uh, the very AI specific, tech specific aspects of it. And all of this is, all of this is tied together by this bracket that we call the AI life cycle, which is a very iterative and dynamic way of working, um, which, is, which is quite crucial when you work in sort of continuous deployment AI setups. We really think that um, Europe and also Switzerland are a really um, rich breeding ground for AI. We have a lot of talent, a lot of really excellent researchers, and we hope to make a contribution to bring this really into production and create jobs and cool commercially successful companies around this technology in Europe. And um, yeah, I hope you, you enjoy uh, the, the format and I look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Florent Ducoma. I'm a tech IP lawyer and I'm going to talk to you about protection and valuation of IP assets for tech scale-ups in Switzerland. So why Switzerland? First of all, because it's a tech supportive environment that supports tech companies with a very good regulatory framework anticipating new technologies, the legislative approach at the forefront of innovation, always looking at what happens and adapting the legal framework, and government support for tech companies, and with the great financing opportunities, both in terms of venture capital and in terms of uh, private equity for financing tech companies. Second, because the intellectual property law framework is far advanced uh, with a, a very good patent protection process um, where you can uh, file an application which includes requests for a patent as well as technical documents that need to be submitted. And if all conditions are met, the application is published after 18 months with a 12 month priority period in all member states of the Paris Convention. So the patent process will go through a substantive examination with a patent expert that examine, examine whether the technical documents meet the legal requirements. And you can always, always ask for an accelerated substantive examination that can be carried out within the, the priority period. So the patent is then granted for 20 years and of course will be published. So what's interesting with the, this substantive examination is the uh, exam examiners will check the technical character of the patent. Does the invention solve a problem using a technical mean? And will examine whether there's ground for refusal. Is your invention patentable by law? Um, is your invention presented in such a way that a person skilled in the art can understand it. And we look at whether the scope of protection being claimed is sufficiently clearly understandable. But the Swiss patent is not officially examining the novelty and inventive steps. So prior art research must be done first uh, in a separate way. Um, the patent examiner will not check this element. Another interesting uh, new law that entered in force last April is the new Copyright Act, protecting uh, works of literature and art, including computer softwares and neighboring right of performing artists, producers of phonograms and broadcasting companies. So this new law entered in force in order to encompass the digital age and protects automatically the works at the moment of creation. Um, and the minimum requirement for a work to be protected is an individual character, except for photographs, where, which are protected irrespective of whether they have individual character or not. A third reason why Switzerland is interesting in terms of innovation is its positioning towards blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology. So there's a new distributed ledger technology framework that entered in force last February, uh, 1st of, of February 2021, allowing a transfer of rights 
including intellectual property rights and license rights using distributed ledger technology. And this new law paves the way for tokenization of IP rights or neighboring rights, allowing these rights to be transferred over the blockchain and facilitating the licensing of IP rights, the valuing of IP rights, and the assignment of IP rights. On September 2021 this year, there's going to be the new DLT financial infrastructure license that will enter in force that will allow for secondary trading of security asset tokens using distributed ledger technology. This will really change the way capital market will function using this technology as a background technology for trading purposes. And the fourth reason why Switzerland is interesting for tech companies is of course for tax reasons, and especially because of the patent box. Research and development costs, as well as income from Swiss and foreign patents, enjoy privileged tax treatments. This may result in a reduction of income of up to 90% of entailing corresponding tax advantages. This regulation favors medium-sized enterprises in Switzerland, SMEs, operating in research, development, and innovation. And the corporate income tax at the federal level is this year 8.5%, whereas cantonal income tax range in the majority of the cantons between 12 to 14%. So there's interesting tax advantages of having a company located in Switzerland. Thank you very much. We're really looking forward to welcoming you in Switzerland.